I feel a little bit embarrassed. It's pretty ugly, isn't it? It generally looks a bit dreary. It's definitely not a looker. Across the country, there are people stuck with an embarrassing problem. You certainly wouldn't drive past and go, oh, I want to live in that house. It's a very tired house. It feels like it's gone... <sighs> and these aren't just the unlucky few. Thousands of us feel burdened with houses that are dated and dreary. But a fresh eye can transform even the ugliest house into a dream home. I need to make this space exciting to create fantastic drama. I'm given the owners of some of Britain's ugliest houses, the services of some of our most talented architects. What I strive for, find the heart of the home, and it's just getting that back, getting the kind of the life and soul back. With money tight... I'm not hopeful about what we can get for that 50,000. And ambitions high... Delivering a vision that everyone will be happy with won't be easy. I do have reservations mm -hmm. about this. If a client has chips away too much of the design, it starts to look very ordinary again. But if they get it right, it will prove that great architecture doesn't have to cost the earth. I actually can't believe that we live in a house like this. And has the power to transform not just buildings... It's fulfilled our dreams, really. ..but lives. It's gone from dark to something wonderful. It's so different. It's as if someone's lifted our house out and <laughs> put a new one in its place. After World War I, Britain began a new social experiment to build council housing estates for working class families. And one of the first was here, a leafy corner of Croydon in South London, where 20 houses were built around a green in 1929. Now, when you think of social housing, we tend to think of very large-scale, very impersonal council estates. But this estate, which is a lovely 1920s crescent, is something quite different. It feels slightly more of a human scale. The council provided solidly built family homes on generous-sized plots, and the years have only enhanced their period character. They're actually quite nice, until you get to this one. Our house stands out on the street, and not for good reasons. Dark, dank, ugly. I pull up on the drive and I dislike it. Um, we need a bigger kitchen. IT consultant Ali and administrator and part-time music teacher Denise bought this three-bedroom house ten years ago for £225,000. The house has been definitely experimented with, hasn't it? And probably by people who've experimented with hallucinogenic drugs in some ways because they've a bit here, a bit here, a bit more pebble dashing, a conservatory on the back. Years of modification by previous owners have destroyed any charm it once had. The original house is lost. There's no cohesion to the house and it's very dark. It's a bit of a cave. And with two growing children, Cameron and Maya, space is now also becoming an issue. It's just everything is crammed into that conservatory. My piano is stuffed in a corner next to the washing machine. But you can't sit in the kitchen diner because there's too much noise. So you can't yeah. partition it. Our entire life seems <clears> to be in kind of a, a five metre by two and a half metre space. <laughs> Good morning. Hello. How are you? Thank so you. nice are to you? see you. How are you? Right. Come on, let's have a look at your house from the outside. It's um, it's slightly different to the others on the street, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, it stands out. <laughs> it's quite a sad state of affairs when you pull up to your own house, which you've probably worked really hard for. We have yeah. borrowed lots of money again, scraped yeah. it away, yeah. paying the mortgage off every yeah. month, and you won't go on. I hate the look of my house. Yeah. What are the things that you dislike on the outside? Pebble dash. Porch, definitely. Right. It's a shame because actually the the style of these houses I quite like. Yeah, you know, they, they've got a, they've got a nice, yeah. lovely domestic, homely yeah. feel to it, bordering yeah. on being quite cottage-like. And then there's yours. Yeah. <laughs> Don't hold back. <laughs> Can we go inside? Have a look. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Come on in. Home sweet home, eh? Yep. Yes. 
You know what, I actually really understand why that porch is on there, though, because you're walking into an open plan space straight away, aren't you? Yes. Yeah. You come straight yeah, yeah. through the front door and you're in your living room. I mean, it's obviously quite dark. Yeah. That's because they bricked up a window there and a window there. A window there. No. But it's that's quite rare it's that people make a decision to block up windows. Yeah. Someone obviously took out this wall at some point and they put the beams in, which gives it a country cottage feel. And I, I was thinking more of a pub. Oh! Oh, you may leave! <laughs> it's I think it's got to go. go. It's got to go. And we don't also have a separate room. Everything's open plan. Yeah. How many kids have you got? Two. Mm. And one's a teenager and they travel in packs, so the ten come over and, you know, where do we, we sit in our room. Yeah. When your kids are small, this open plan living is the great. best thing yeah. ever. Yeah. So when they're one, two, three, four years old, you keep an eye on them all the time. As soon as there's a teen involved, open plan living becomes carnage. The original layout would have had three rooms downstairs with windows on the side. But these have been bricked up and walls knocked out to create one open space. In addition, a flimsy conservatory has been added at the back. You've got everything in here, haven't you? Yeah, except the kitchen sink. We've got the tumble dryer, the washing machine, the piano, the art space, the sheet music storage, the kitchen storage, the desk. <laughs> yeah, pretty much everything, really. You've That's even got the queen in here. But behind this mayhem lies a space with enormous potential. I'll tell you what, though, first walking out is your garden. It's huge, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Well, it's that's great, actually. actually. It's because it's, it's really on the corner. Good. It's corner plot. There's a huge amount of unused space here, oh, and of course, the things that you could do with this are really exciting. Yeah, really, really it's exciting. Upstairs, the unaltered 1920s layout has a bathroom and three bedrooms. Two doubles and a small single. This is the kids' second room. This is just too small. This is a great example of a house that's been knocked around so many times over the years to the point where it's really lost its identity. It's forgot about what it is, really. So what is your budget? 120,000. 120,000. Yeah. That's not a small amount of money. That's no. not like spending 30 grand on a bit of work in no. a new kitchen. No. Just how big a commitment is this for you guys as a family? It's everything. It's a lot. Denise and Ali's ex council house is a bit like an old sad suit. But back in its day, it would have been someone's Sunday best, worn with pride. What it needs now is someone with vision who can see beyond its tattered facade and rediscover the special qualities it had when it was first built. Jo Cowan runs her own practice and has also worked for Richard Rogers' partnership, Rogers Stoke Harbour, on buildings that are strikingly modern. But her expertise is not confined to the new. I absolutely love working with period houses. I feel that like there's a real history with them. Um, I feel that like there's been so many families that have lived with them, changing them, adapting them. This house is the prime example. What we've done is we've really respected the fabric of the original building, and then on top of that, laid in something that's very modern and really interesting and really opens up how the house can be used. But to show that her approach can also transform the humblest of council houses, Jaws volunteered to take on Ali and Denise's house. There's a lot of problems with this house, both the way it looks and the way it functions. One of the things I'd really like to do is to strip back all those kind of layers of additions and actually bring out the beautiful house underneath. Bringing that light through whilst also organising the space is going to be one of our biggest challenges. We're looking at effectively this, which is the sun path coming round. What we want that light to do is effectively trickle all the way through to here. So you really do get a space that's washed with light from front to back. I'm excited to see what she comes up with. I'm not I mean, saying I'm fussy, but... But. We want a lot. We want the world. Two weeks later, Joel has come up with a design for Ali and Denise's house for their budget of £120,000. And I can't wait to see it. Coming up with a brilliant design takes hard work, skill, and a huge amount of imagination. For me, it's the most exciting part 
of being an architect. You really hope that you've nailed the client's brief. And more than anything, you want to create something that they love. So, Joey, you've got two very nervous but excited clients here, I think. Very nervous. <laughs> you've got a nervous architect here as well. So, <laughs> so even with all the ability to extend, um, we've got a lot to fit in. You needed spaces that could be flexible. Mm -hmm. You wanted light that connected the front to the back. A lot of the options I'm giving you today, we're going to have to treat a little bit like a menu because we, we will not be able to achieve everything in your budget. So if I start you on the plan for the ground floor, Joe is proposing that they take advantage of the generous garden and create a large glass extension, almost doubling their living space, allowing light to flood the entire ground floor. Her idea is to use a metal-framed glazing system called Crittle for the extension and also internally to separate the central kitchen dining room from a new study and private snug. Key to the design, every internal element will line up with the frames of the crittle glazing to give the downstairs visual unity. To address the ugly facade, Joe's next plan is to render over the pebble dash, knock down the shoddy porch and replace it with a sleek modern one that mirrors the architecture of the rear extension. I have to say, I really like this. Yeah, this, I do really, yes, really like this. I this like is, it. It's industrial look yeah. as well. I think the internal glazing is brilliant. Yeah, really I've good. Never seen anything like it. I, the crittle system works for me. For us, it's about understanding your priorities. I mean, I'm a mum, and I know what you need in terms of space. Yeah. I mean, your children mm. are getting older and older, meaning that they're going to want their own space within the house. So going to the first floor, this is quite radical, and it really comes down to that loft space. To give the family more space, Joe has gone beyond the original brief and come up with an additional option for upstairs. Her idea is to open up the loft to create a new bedroom, allowing the first floor to be reconfigured to make two larger sized rooms. Your upstairs bit, I'm yes. blown away with. So Joe, this, I mean, this is all brilliant. Do you think they can deliver all of this for their budget? No, um, is the short answer. How much over our budget is it? Um, we haven't done full costings, but I would say you're about 35% over your budget. So you'd be looking at 150 to 160,000 all in. What we wanted to do today was to show you all the possibilities to give you that opportunity to choose where you did spend your money. This is a house that is in desperate need of some creativity and jewel has come with that in abundance. She's come up with a fantastic scheme, I think, but one of the problems when you see such a good project and you've got clients like Ali and Denise is that they want everything, absolutely everything. The space, the light, the extra bathrooms, the bigger bedrooms. And the problem is you can't always have everything, so they've got some really tough decisions to make. Tucked away on this homely ex-council estate on the outskirts of London, there's one house that has definitely seen better days. The outside to me is pretty ugly. It feels like it's gone, <sighs> here I am. This damning assessment is shared by others in the Crescent. It does stand out a bit, not in keeping with the rest of the road. The house may not fit in, but Denise and Ali are reluctant to move. It is in a very good location. It's surrounded by green fields, hectares of woodlands. All the neighbours are lovely, and we've got the green out the front that the kids can kind of play on. The Crescent has its own personality. It's, it's a little community. Everybody looks after each other. Some of the neighbours have grown up here all their lives. I've lived at the Crescent for 75 years. I was born at number eight. There's a nice green in front. Here, so you're off the main road. What, what more do you want? Once upon a time, see, all the children around here used to play football on the green and cricket. The Crescent may still be thriving as a community, but years of home improvements have taken their toll on Denise and Ali's house. The original house is lost under uh, people's experimentation. You don't walk in and feel that it flows anymore. 
To breathe fresh life into the house, architect Joe Cowan has come up with two options for Denise and Ali to choose from. The first, a ground floor extension. The second, a complete renovation of the entire house, which will cost £40,000 over their £120,000 budget. Denise and Ali have decided to go for the whole lot. The, the original budget was uh, 120,000, and that was to do all of the all of the extension work and all of the downstairs, downstairs basically, the downstairs wasn't it? Piece, yeah. yeah. Um, so we've added added on top of that money to to we've do the loft. About 40 grand. A huge amount of work. I mean, it, it was a massive decision. Um, yeah, because it's involving up in mortgages and going down yeah. routes we weren't particularly going down before. Yeah. I think we took the decision that we just won't move <clears throat> for a very long time. Yeah. And what we end up with here is a space which is an awful lot more usable for us as a family, and then when the kids go, we can argue over their bedrooms for our own personal studies. studies. With the whole house being renovated, Denise and Ali are moving the family out into a flat nearby. I really need a third hand, you know? To make sure it hits its four-month schedule, Jaws brought on one of her most trusted contractors, master builder Seb Boychek. It's going to be part of the lot. But as soon as his team starts stripping back the walls and ceilings, they discover a problem. Unfortunately, you uncovered that the, the existing steel is too small to support the upper floor, so we're going to replace it with a big one. This steel needs to be um, replaced as well. At £1,000 each, the new steels might be an unwelcome cost, but are crucial to create the support for the large opening for the extension. Seb, how's it going? Good to see you. Right. You all right? An important bit of steel work. You know what? As much as this stuff might look really boring, just lengths of steel, these are the skeleton of the new building, and these allow us to make smaller openings into much bigger openings and allow us to take out lots of internal walls to make the architectural space so much more exciting. Without them, we can't get a great house. There's a fit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Fits like a glove. Perfect. For Denise and Ali, now that the opening for the new extension has been created, they can start to get a sense of how it will open up the entire ground floor plan. So not quite a home sweet home, but it certainly moved on. What a space this is. This, well, is, this, this is our kitchen diner. And considering this used to be our kitchen diner, that yeah. is... I'm actually getting a little bit excited now. Yeah, no, this is really cool. I mean, it's nearly doubling the amount of space. Yeah. yeah. To help maximise every centimetre of this massive new space, Joe is using a classic design technique. We effectively carve up the plan into a grid, which allows us to order a series of spaces through the building. Jaws basing her grid on the centrepiece of her design, the huge crittle windows. Every internal element will line up with the metal frames, creating a series of harmonious spaces. But to create the space needed for Jaws' design, Seb and his team have to rip the entire house apart and dig out tons of earth, revealing an expensive problem. The old garden wall was unsupported. It was a massive extra because, as you can see, it was a huge amount of underpinning. Um, so that, that was a that was an additional that you know had to be done. Dealing with the wall has cost three thousand six hundred pounds, and it's just one of the many unforeseen expenses that's now pushing them over their one hundred and sixty thousand budget. We found a huge yeah. amount of mould behind the walls, so we had to strip the plaster off. So that was a huge job. We yeah. spoke to quite a few people, and they just said. Just clad it. On the outside, yeah. yeah. So that, wrapping it. Yeah. yeah. So that's that, a big job. That's a big it's job. Huge. So it's things like that. And then once you go down that route, you think, OK, we've got to replace the windows. We've basically rebuilt the house. You know? Yeah. It's, yeah, you it's... have completely rebuilt the house, and the fact that you're going to wrap it on every single wall and replace the windows, I mean, 
you look at it now, all you've got is a few roof timbers, a few roof tiles, and, and two walls. Two walls. Yeah. And that's going, so it's one and a half walls. <laughs> yep. So where's the rest of the money come from? <laughs> Baked, borrowed and stolen. It, literally, we, we can remortgage in October. So, um... It is, yeah, it's, it's been a lot of sleepless nights. Yeah. Two or three months of really not, not sleeping, permanent worry. It's stretched financially. Denise and Ali are investing heavily in their ex-council house. To reassure Denise that her sleepless nights will pay off, I'm taking her to see a house I hope will inspire her. Now, the house I want to show you has had a major change, okay. outside and inside. This is what the house was like. Like Denise's home, this ex-council house was built in the 1920s, but has been extended and totally reconfigured. And look at it now. Wow. <laughs> oh, my God. Very big, very bold. It's I pretty incredible. I feel much better about what we're doing to our ex-council house now actually seeing this. It does actually work. In terms of the detail of it, you can see where it's been re-rendered on the outside, mm. which you're going to do? Yeah. So come on in. Very contemporary yeah. entrance hallway. Lovely new staircase. They actually moved the stair as well to make the house work even better. But I really want to show you the kitchen. Very open plan, very light kitchen. This is very creative, this whole space, isn't it? Just as with Joe's design, the kitchen is at the heart of this home. The window seat's lovely, isn't it? Oh, I love it. Especially when you've got a nice little bare window like this. Yeah. And the different spaces are carefully aligned. I mean, spatially, well, I think it's great. You can look all the way down this space to the living room. And it's just really nice how it flows through. So it, mm. it feels like very separate zones. I like this. And that's just the simplest architectural move ever. Mm. This is the line of the old original house here. And everything to the right-hand side oh. is new. So they've just put a strip of glass in. It okay. gives that distinction between old and new. Old house this side, new stuff that side. And then big door, huge sliding door opening out onto the courtyard. And then you go through this lovely courtyard space, which I think is fantastic, actually. As with Denise's home, this house is built on a generous plot allowing them lots of room to extend and create a connection between inside and out. It's like having another room on the house. Yeah. So what do you think of the whole place? Oh, it's fantastic. I know you spent all the money that you could ever possibly imagine. Mm. We don't talk about it. <laughs> Denise and Ali are making a huge commitment to build a family home for Cameron and Maya to grow up in for years to come. I just say, it looks like we've got, like, from like World War One. Oh, the trenches, yeah. yeah. Trenches. I'm in my kitchen. I'm in. I'm out, I'm out, I'm out. Are you sure it's safe? By opening up the loft room to create a new room for Maya, Joe's been able to reconfigure the first floor to create two larger bedrooms. It will be nice on this floor just having two bedrooms. I'm liking the feel of the extra space that gets created up here in the, in the landing area, definitely. Look up. That's my room. That's your room? It's quite so big. Got... Yeah. So she's basically going to be technically in her old room. It's just bigger and it's higher up. And she's going to be away from you. Yes! For Denise, keeping on top of such a big build, as well as working, is becoming all-consuming. All right, bye. I've got a box over there of things I have to attend to. I've got another box of things I have attended to. So, I mean, anybody who's ever done this will tell you it's just endless. I hardly have seen her a lot yeah. of the time because she's working on this so much. She seems a little tired, so I think she needs a little bit more sleep. Back at site, all the hard work is paying off as the walls for the new extension start to take shape. What an incredible transformation already. Look at it. Footings are in. But the most intensive stage of this build is only just beginning. Once the spaces are formed and you've got to start putting everything back, that's when it takes a long time. And actually, that's when you start spending most of your money. Plumbing, 
plaster, kitchens, bathrooms, tiles, painting, decorating, joinery work. That's the expensive stuff. In Croydon, Denise and Ali are halfway through the four month schedule to totally remodel their 1920s ex council house to provide extra living space for their growing family. But for one resident who's lived here all his life, private space was not the norm. My two brothers, we all slept in the same room. Three, three brothers in one bedroom. So I slept with my brother in the double bed, and my younger brother had the single bed. Today, they expect every child to have their own room. Despite her ballooning budget, Denise's expectations for her home include a state-of-the-art kitchen. This whole thing here is you know, my kitchen, cupboards, floor. We have a budget for the kitchen. It's not very much. I just don't think it, we really considered the actual kitchen design too much at the beginning. And as we've gone further into the build, it's become quite apparent we do need something of a certain standard that it doesn't let down the rest of the house, really. So we have decided to throw a little bit more money into the kitty and actually go to a proper designer. Hello. Hello, Denise. The new kitchen will be the central feature of the downstairs layout. So Denise wants it to look good. I went for a larger island. It's a very big island. You had the hob extractor. I really like that, actually. <laughs> Your extractor has a light. Could you turn it on? Will it have oh, a you've got the remote control. <laughs> it's lovely. <laughs> like it all. I like it more. <laughs> I'm loving that. And I now feel like I've got a really big kitchen. And you do have a very big kitchen. Yeah, I do. But I'm worried Denise and Ali are letting their costs climb well over their original £120,000 budget. So I've arranged to meet them at the flat they're staying in during the bills. How much did you budget for your original kitchen and the original scheme? I think it was 5000 plus um, an extra figure for fitting. How much are you spending now? A bit more than that. A bit more than that. <laughs> Come on, <laughs> that, you can't just give me that. I reckon it'll be about 17 in total by the time it's all finished. How much is the predicted spend? Painted and decorated, livable. It could hit about 180. I think probably more without your kitchen and your flooring and some other finishes. You're pushing 200,000 quid. Yeah, probably. probably. Yeah. And it has caused a lot of sleepless nights, if I'm honest. Is all of this worth it? Yes, absolutely. Stressful, and we're borrowing a huge amount. Um, but I would say, it's, we were, we're building a forever house. We're not building something that in two years' time we want to sell and move out and go and live somewhere else. You haven't answered. Uh, yes. But I am nervous. I am really nervous, if I'm honest. Really. Denise and Ali are taking a big gamble investing so much into this house, but it's too late to turn back now. Seb and his team are erecting the giant steels that will form the frame for the new extension. And it's huge. So we just uh, finished fitting the steels. This is the last which is going on. And basically we are now ready to build uh, the external walls and uh, build a roof on top of the um, extension. The team push on to get the shell of the extension watertight but they're up against the weather. We are not doing great. We have some rain, rainfalls, uh, which is slowing us down. When it's raining, basically, you cannot work uh, with this stuff because it's not going to be completely waterproof. So we're going to finish that before it starts raining again. With the house watertight, the ceiling can be installed. 
and a few days later, Ali visits site to view progress. Hey, what I love about it is the ceiling downstairs. Before, in the old house, we had two steel beams that protruded into the room. Now it's just one beautiful flat ceiling, and you can come in through the front door, and you can just look straight through right out into the back garden. So I think from an architectural point of view, it's amazing. It's a huge transformation. With work steaming ahead at the back of the house, it's time to tackle the most ugly element of the facade, the pebble dash. Well, funnily enough, this is something I'm actually getting very excited about because the thing I hate most about my house is how it actually looks. You all right there, mate? How's it looking? Yeah, it's good, mate. The pebble dash is going to be wrapped in a layer of insulation and a final coat of white render. I would say getting the outside done is like getting your hair done. It's, you know, you pull up onto the drive and it's like, oh, I'm home, because it looks lovely, whereas I've always felt I pulled up on the drive and thought, oh, I live here. <laughs> Rather than strip off the pebble dash, Ali and Denise are wrapping it in a skin of new insulation. It's actually super simple. You see above here, there's the existing pebble dash in all of its glory. Not looking very good. And you just get big sections of insulation, polystyrene, basically. Wrap it around the outside, little stud fixings through there. These brace it all together, and then it's rendered over the top. It's just like putting a big, thick winter jacket on. These days, we may be keen to cover it up, but Pebble Dash was fashionable at the end of the 19th century, popularised by the arts and crafts movement. But by the 1920s, it was heading down market, as builders used it to cover up poor quality brickwork. It takes a whole week for Denise and Ali's pebble dash to be wrapped up, rendered and painted. I'm interested to see what impact it's made. Look at this, what a transformation on the outside. All of that very bobbly, slightly yieldy look and pebble dash is now a very smooth, contemporary white render. And it's all insulated under there as well. A nice, smart, warm, modern house. Morning, gents. How are you? Yeah, thanks. That's looking very smart. Thank you very very smart indeed. Morning. How are you? <laughs> so I'm too busy looking at the house. It looks great, doesn't it? <laughs> it's fantastic. Absolutely brilliant. What really good. A difference. Yeah. Yeah. The yeah. pebble dash has gone. Yeah. It's oh. much smoother. It's much smarter. Yeah. And it's, it's more contemporary. And it's thermally clad. And to... you feel the temperature difference inside already. Yeah. How are you feeling about this? Obviously, desperate to get in. Yeah. Yeah, it's, I mean, I'd, I'd say this last bit is probably quite stressful. But yeah. seeing the work that, you know, the guys are doing now, it's, it's really taking shape and it's transforming. So yeah. it's on the final, final I chose one. curtains yesterday. Yeah. You picked curtains. I know, got to that stage. <laughs> I'm that loving is, that. You're on the home straight. Yeah. yeah. And it's, 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 in a funny kind of way, the, the glass being the last thing that goes in is becoming quite exciting because it's, that is the main feature of Joe's whole design. And everything's going to feel bigger because once you've got all this glass in, it's going to look staggering. It's hard to get a feel for it now because you've got all of your lovely black plastic sheeting up there. When you get all this off, what a difference that will make. It will literally be let there be light. Yeah, and there be, is. Take this off, the light will flood through. It'll be amazing. Yeah. It'll be brilliant. I know. Absolutely brilliant. I can't wait to see it. Joel plans to use a metal-framed window system called Crittle, not only to create the external wall of the extension, but also as a room divider internally, allowing light to flood into the entire ground floor. What we're hoping to see when you walk into this house is this beautiful series of glass Crittle walls. Glass boxes sat within a black metal frame, which highlights a sequence of views, firstly from the living room, then through to the kitchen, and then across that very large rear expanse and into the garden. Joel's use of Crittle harks back to the original windows, used in these houses when first built. Back then, they were single glazed and notoriously cold. But today, Crittle is produced as double glazed units and back in fashion, mainly for commercial buildings. With its slim profile frames, it's also an elegant way of creating a glazed wall in a house.
which is what Joel has designed for Denise and Ali's new extension. And two weeks later, the first of the glazing arrives. Really big, exciting day on site today. The internal glass partitions are going up. Really nice architectural device to give you flexibility to close off a space and open it up when you need it to. Well, the most exciting part of this entire project is when the huge glass wall is built into the new elevation. That's when this very ordinary, ugly house comes to life. Over the next week, as the interior starts to come together, the glazing for the back of the extension is fitted, pane by pane. All 21,000 pounds of it. And a new door promises to transform the front of the house into one that Ali and Denise will be proud to come home to. But even so, not everyone's convinced it's all been worthwhile. Oh dear, oh dear. I watch all the housing programmes on TV. You only spend money on a property if you're going to make money. But you won't make no money on this house. Because it's ex-council. When I first came here to see Denise and Ali's home, it was a tired and sad, dysfunctional mess. And over the years, it had been slowly strangled by really ugly alterations and additions. A flimsy, characterless porch tacked onto the front, and the coating of ugly pebble dash had destroyed its 1920s facade. It needed a bold vision from an architect with a real sympathy for old buildings. Joel Cowan's challenge was to resurrect the 1920s house and transform it into a spacious, beautiful and light-filled home. Now that it's finished, I'm intrigued to see if she's pulled it off. Look at that. What? A transformation. The crisp white facade sits proudly but modestly on the street, while the clean lines of the porch hint at what lies beyond. Hello. Good morning. Come on out. Good morning. Lovely to see you. Thank you. You well? Yeah, very Hello, well. Man. What are you doing? All right. You guys must be absolutely thrilled. Very. Oh, over it's the moon. Brilliant. Over you the moon. Have done it. Yeah. Not just us, there's a lot of people. A lot of <laughs> A mini army, in fact. Yes. But it looks crisp, it looks fresh. And, and different, but not kind of radically different, is it? No. You haven't gone super contemporary with the front. No, that's what I quite like about it. It still fits in with the rest of the street and it's quite discreet about what's actually inside. I love that. Uh, you I'm were... not embarrassed now. I was just about to say, you were very ashamed of this not house anymore. before. <laughs> no, I absolutely, absolutely love it. It's unassuming from the outside yeah. compared to what's behind the front door. Should we go inside? Have a look? Oh, go yes. On Come on, you lead the way. All right, then. Inside, this house was starved of light. A leaky plastic roof conservatory served as a utility come music room. While upstairs, the kids were growing too big for their bedrooms. It doesn't get much better than that, does it? No. no. The space just opens out in front of you. Jaws Crittle wall and extension allows a view all the way through to an entirely re-landscaped garden and light into the ground floor. I actually feel like I'm in a completely different house. There's yeah. no part of the old house here. I have to really. say, no. it's, it's, it's so different. Yeah. It is absolutely beautiful. Got... It really is. It's quite brave and bold yeah. to put the windows in like you have the internal glazed screens. Yes. Because there is always a risk it might feel a little bit commercial. You know, a little bit like an office space, yes. you know, with exactly. little separate meeting rooms. Well, that was my big fear, this was all going to look a bit industrial, and it, it just really doesn't. It doesn't at all, does it? The walls are flowing through, the ceiling's running through level. Yeah. It just opens the whole thing up. It's totally transformed, this, this whole area. This is a room the kids can sit in. We can sit out there, shut the door, or have it all open. Best and we can see what they're doing. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go through your wonderful doors. So beautiful, aren't they? To what looks like quite a pricey kitchen. 
Denise's kitchen sits proudly right at the centre of the new living space. I have to say, this is a lot over its budget. How much, roughly? Come on. I'm going to squeeze this out of you. It was about 25. 25,000 quid? Yeah. That's £20,000 over what they'd originally budgeted. Every time I look to kind of like cheaper options, you're just thinking it is the one thing you see from wherever you are. This is our entertaining space. This is the where we want people around. We've got queues of people inviting themselves over for dinner. And that's great because it's what we want. And then through all of it, what you can't escape anywhere no. is your garden. Yeah. Yeah. With about nine metres of crittle spanning the whole of the outside yeah. of the house. One big, enormous picture window. In fact, there's many little pictures because you've got framed yeah. in all these little sections. It's a lovely thing. Really, really lovely. And it's a brave move to put the kitchen in the middle. Honestly, it really is. Because sometimes people feel like it might plug the space a little bit. Yeah. But because of the way that you guys live and you wanted the kitchen to be the dominant thing, yeah. mm. it works. And you've got enough space to be able to flow around it on either side. Yeah. Get through to the garden. It really has opened it up because the garden yeah. was never ever part of the house. Now it's up. It's, it is part of it. Yeah. It's fabulous. And do you know what? You're not only just looking out to your garden through that enormous expanse of glass, but you're looking up. Yeah. Yeah. Which is lovely. Really, really beautiful. Yeah. I'm very, very, really very happy. happy. Yeah. <laughs> The extension not only stretches the whole width of the back of the house, but to the side too, creating an extra room for work and for Denise to teach in. What do you call this? Music room? Study? Study. I'm music room. I call it study. <laughs> I love it. One each. That's absolutely <laughs> fine. What a beautiful space. Oh, it's lovely. Yeah. You've Amazing. got so much room. Lovely desk. Great place to sit. Lovely place for you to do music. I've actually got the physical space to teach now. Yeah. And at the same time, while you're here, you're looking at the garden all yeah. the yeah. time. It is beautiful. Can we see the rest of the house? Yes. yes. Come on, let's yes. go upstairs. Let's go. So this is all changed. It's only a whole new first floor, isn't it? It is, yeah. Upstairs, Joe has cleverly reconfigured the original floor plan to make space for two larger bedrooms and a refurbished bathroom. So this is master bedroom? Yes. yes. Which is very smart. A proper grown-up master bedroom. We've got a nice view out of the window. And it's all been made possible by moving Maya's bedroom into the loft. What's fabulous about this is it's given you so much more extra floor space. Yes. That you yeah. really wanted. Yeah. Definitely. It's great. I mean, everything's just become bigger. Bigger. More floor area. Yeah. We wanted a house that the kids can stay until they're, you know, mid-twenties or whatever. Yeah. Basically, you've reconfigured the entire house. Yeah. 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 I mean, you really have. Yeah. Every single square millimetre of this house has been done. <laughs> yes. Yeah. I think there's sections in the roof that haven't. <laughs> Some of the tiles, maybe, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's about I mean, it. <laughs> that is it. Joe's transformed every bit of this house, doubling the living space. But the real star of the show is at the back. And then really, kind of the moment I've been waiting for, I have to say, is being able to walk out of your garden, turn, there it is. Yeah. In all of its glory. Yeah. It's beautiful. You can just tell it's been well considered, well planned and well designed because it's all on a grid. Yeah. Joe's yeah. literally designed a grid system so every single one of those frames yeah. kind of runs through and ties in with everything behind it. It just feels Right. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's fantastic. I actually still can't believe that we live in a house like this. I feel very, very blessed to be able to live in a house like this. I really do. The clever and sympathetic reimagining of this house is thanks to architect Jo Cowan. Her vision and Denise and Ali's willingness to go over their original budgets have turned it into a home that works for all the family. So, Joe, are you happy with it? Extremely happy with it. Um, I think you have to always remember what this house was. You know, we, we are taking a house that's quite run down and giving it a new lease of life. It got bigger and bigger and bigger. It started off with an amazing, beautiful design, which then led us on to doing so many other bits and pieces that we hadn't 
really factored in. It was one of those things where you kind of went, right, take a deep breath, we're just going to have to go with this. An architect is always going to challenge the stereotypes of what yeah. you think you want. Yeah. That's their job. Yeah. You know, we're going to push you as hard as we can, you know, to effectively create something that's beautiful. Yeah. And it's not necessarily what you would have initially thought about. Yeah. So, final number, what did you spend? We're now over 200. Over 200,000 pounds? Yeah. And it does make sense. If you think every year we probably spent a few thousand pounds here, a few thousand pounds there doing stuff. And we've just just done it in one hit, which is yeah. why it feels so... <gasps> but I'm not planning on buying anything. <laughs> I spent like... so much on the kitchen. <laughs> I just hope you like everything in this house because it's staying. But even though that's a big investment, you have done the entire house. Yes. Yeah, everything. We have. Yeah, yeah, we've really Everything. Finished. It's an investment worth making, isn't it? Seriously, in oh, terms yeah. of quality of life for you guys. Absolutely, yeah. No, would, I mean, yeah. it's 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 would not have it any other way. When Joel first presented her designs for a beautiful extension, Denise and Ali were given a tantalising glimpse of what their former council house could become. They were so seduced by Joel's vision, they took the brave step of refashioning every single square inch of their home. Now, somehow, Joel managed to balance their soaring ambition with her original design, breathe a new life into this old house, while at the same time celebrating some of the special qualities it had when it was first built.